So first, maybe you could tell us a little bit about Barna Group, what you guys do, uh, how you yeah. conduct your research. Absolutely. So Barna Group is um, a social research organization, um, and we been around for over 30 years and focus primarily on sort of, we, we, do, we do research that encompasses all of the US, but we take a real focused look at different faith segments and communities. So evangelicals, practicing Christians, Catholics, um, Protestants, uh, just kind of a variety of different ways that the faith landscape interacts with these different political and social issues. Mm -hmm. And can you give us a kind of taste for what, what the political landscape is. I mean, I the can. media gives us, well, I think we all have an idea about how it's going, um, but what does the data suggest? Yeah. yeah, so we'll do a quick quick run through of that. Yeah. Um, so we ask people, um, in every poll that we do, we ask people to identify various sort of demographic, psychographic, and what we call theolographic questions, which for us is sort of identifying different faith breeds that are out there. So one of the questions that we ask in every survey that we do is whether people identify as mostly conservative, mostly liberal, or somewhere in between. So this is sort of all American adults, so you can see um, the, the plurality here are, are saying that they, are, they identify as somewhere in between. And um, throughout while I talk, you'll see sort of an N equals at the bottom of these, and that's just the total sample size. So this is a very large sample size um, um, of people. So it's, it's very representative of the US. So you can see we're, we're, Americans are swinging slightly toward conservative in terms of identifying with values, um, but are mostly in between. Um, now, when you start breaking that down by generation, you can really see that there is, um, a real difference between the youngest generation and the oldest generation and almost a reversal in terms of identifying as conservative and liberal. So um, you can see that uh, the millennials are more likely to be identifying um, as liberal. Um, so, and when you look at faith segments, so evangelicals and practicing Christians are the two that I wanted to take a look at. Mm -hmm. um, and practicing Christians, for our definition, this is a Barna definition, as well as evangelical is. Um, and what I mean by that is we've sort of, we ask some, like I talked about, those sort of theolographic questions. And by asking those questions, we, the ways that people answer those, not self-ID, not saying, yes, I'm an evangelical, yes, I'm a practicing Christian, but we ask some questions, and the way that they answer those questions, we identify them as evangelical. So there's a series of nine belief questions that we ask people, and if they say yes to all of those, then they would be classified as an evangelical. Mm -hmm. Practicing Christians is more about behavior than belief, so practicing Christian um, means that they've self-identified as Christian, and then they've said that faith is very important in their life, and they've attended church in the, within the last six weeks. Mm. So you can see there's a real, I mean, this is where it's very startling, right? So practicing Christians are falling a little bit more um, in line and sort of uh, divided on conservative and liberal to a degree. Um, but you can see evangelicals are sharply conservative. They're sharply divided from the rest of the nation in that way. Um, and you'll see this sort of playing out in the rest of the stats that we're going to go through. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, now if you, if you look at race, uh, you can again see some pretty distinct differences, and you can start to see sort of the, the setup here for a lot of the reasons that we see so many divisions, um, particularly right now, the, so many conversations about race. But you can see um, there's, there's a real difference um, between the races. Um, uh, white Americans are, are a little bit more divided, um, and you can see Black Americans, Hispanic, um, all non-whites are, are more liberal. And you can see now, too, that, that real difference from the evangelical community. Hmm. Um, and you can see sort of, okay, now, now these are some of the, the, the conditions for some of what we're seeing. Right. Um, so we also do the Republican, Democrat, Independent, what are you registered? And it's uh. very similar, um, very similar breakdown. We do, there are more registered Democrats uh, in the U.S. right now. Um, the, the independent number is growing every year in our polls. Um, so all adults, uh, if you go by generation, again, you can see sort of uh, the reversal from the older to the younger. And again, this is another division that we talk about pretty regularly even within the church. And you can really see 
okay, there's real ideological and political differences here between generations. Mm. Um, and we've seen uh, particularly um, among Gen Xers a spike in sort of the independent. Um, evangelical and practicing Christian. So again, you see a very sharp difference and a mm. real rise on the conservative mm. or the Republican. And by race, um, it's this, a very similar picture. So uh, again, the, really trying to show, like to set up a lot of what we're talking about for this conference. Like these are some of, these are at the roots even of some of the, the real divisions that we're seeing. Yeah, so we're thinking differently from one another. Yes. So when you, very much it's, so. it's hard to group Americans just as a particular way of thinking, especially American Christians. Um, we seem to be implicated in this kind of division. Um, uh, what about particular issues? Uh, so um, policy, policy yeah. issues. What, what, what kinds of things do you look Absolutely. at? Absolutely. So um, we talked about just earlier you saying sort of the media stirring up this sort of fear and anxiety every four years. Um, when you look at this chart, we asked, you know, is the United States headed in the wrong direction or the right direction? And you can mm -hmm. see how, how the majority of Americans think it's headed in the wrong direction. Um, really only liberals would, a, plural, a majority would say that it's headed in the right direction. And again, you can see how steeply um, evangelicals are responding to this. 93% say it's headed in the wrong direction. Interesting. So there's that, you know, we talked about just this kind of stirring up of fear and anxiety around the state. And, you know, we've talked about the, sort of the rise of Trump and other sort of outside candidates who are really sort of playing on this, this, this fear and this feeling that like the establishment is doing it wrong. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's, you know, that's a real reason for that. Um, this is just favorable and favorable view of the presidential candidate. And you'll see um, the, only, uh, the only polled group in this particular section that would, pre that would prefer Trump over Clinton um, are evangelicals. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Um, yeah, so uh, these are some of the issues. Uh, re religious liberty, Inter abortion, okay, marriage, poverty, social justice. So some of the issues that you all are gonna be talking about over the next few days. What are the, what are the issues? And we can see it up there. Um, yeah. I wonder if you can comment on some of the issues that are that we're most divided over. Well, I think yeah, I think some of the, uh, in, particularly in this one, you can see evangelicals um, are just the religious liberty is at the top of their list, and social justice is really at the bottom of their list in this particular, you know, in this particular thing. And you can see the skeptics. Um, it's it's really the reverse for that. So even just seeing that division between believers and, and non-believers and, and really where our priorities are lying and, um, and just recognizing even, even in our prioritization there's yeah. dramatic differences. Yeah. Um, here's one issue that we talked, we've done some work on immigration versus reality, or the ideal versus the reality. So we see uh, three out of four adults actually believe people from different cultures in rich America. So there is sort of like a continued ideal, a continued desire for and, and recognition that immigration and, and various cultures has really influenced America for the better. Um, but then when we really asked about sort of what about the, the policies, a plurality favors stricter immigration policies. So on the left, you can see um, uh, the blue, I guess is that on your left? But um, the, these are all sort of stricter ideas. So agree that immigrants and refugees take jobs away from America. So you see a, a majority that would say yes. Mm. So the right side is, is less strict policies, the left is more strict. So you can see America is slightly on the side of, of um, stricter policies. And then you can see by, if you look at it by faith, um, evangelicals are much more likely than uh, the broader population to support uh, stricter immigration policies. And we're going to be talking about immigration tomorrow. Um, Tom Crisp is going to be giving a, a talk uh, a, about the ethics of Jesus and uh, its implications on how we should think about immigration. But um, one thing that we're actually going to be addressing later in this very session is, um, is race. Yeah. Right now we're deeply struggling over racial justice um, uh, with the rise of the Black Lives Mo Matter movement, um, with uh, people commenting from all different perspectives. Our social feeds are full of um, uh, sometimes bitter and angry 
uh, d uh, division. So can you speak to race? Yeah, and how I can. Are we, how are American yeah. Christians thinking about yeah. race? Yeah, I mean, America agrees with you. <laughs> um, there is a lot of anger and hostility between the different ethnic and racial groups in America. So you can see the vast majority of America would agree with that statement. Um, across the board, so 84% of Americans would agree with that. Um, but when we start really digging into some of, some of this, so racism, we asked, is racism a, mostly a problem of the past or the present? So those who strongly agreed with that, um, evangelicals and conservatives were more likely than other groups to strongly agree with that. Um, on the flip side, those who strongly disagreed with that, um, you can see, of course, um, you know, maybe what you would expect, um, Black Americans, Hispanic Americans, and non-white are more likely to say that, that, that to disagree that it's a problem of the past. Mm. And then, of course, when you ask, um, when you ask by generation, uh, millennials are much more likely to agree. Oh, this is social disadvantage for people of color, sorry. So um, people of color are often put at a social disadvantage because of their race. So we see some pretty distinct um, differences between generations. Uh, okay. Generations are more likely to agree that that is true. Um, and you can see some pretty distinct differences between uh, races there. Um, and then most, um, so only 16% of evangelicals would uh, strongly agree with the, fact, the statement that um, people of color are put at a social disadvantage because of their color. So again, you're seeing sort of these, these real divisions. Um, and then uh, when we asked about how do you feel about the Black Lives Matter movement, we asked, do you support their message, um, supported it and posted something on social media, participated in an offline activity like a march or a protest. 16% um, of Americans said they don't support it. Only 2% said they su don't support it but actively campaigned against it. Now the majority of Americans in response to how you feel about the Black Lives Matter movement said that all lives matter. So you can see just even that like marketing message that's been that's kind of missed in some ways for a lot of Americans. Right. Um, and then 12% said they don't know enough about it. Um, now, when we asked, do you support the Black Lives Matter movement? Um, so we had about a little over a quarter of all adults. And so again, you can see millennials being much more likely than other generations. So again, it was it was born on social media. It was a campaign that was really actively used young people. So young people have responded to it more than other groups. Um, now again, the percent who feel that all lives matter when asked that, the answer, so ev evangelicals, um, three quarters of them answered in that way. Mm. Um, so you can see some of the differences there. Practicing Christians on, only about half did. Um, so we asked our church as part of the problem for in race today, in when it comes to racism and the hostility there. So you can see um, African Americans who are predominantly identify as Christian, so they're part of the church. They're, they're much more frustrated with the church in this respect than white Americans. Hmm. Um, now, I think this is probably the, <laughs> the most disturbing one. So Christian churches play an important role in racial reconciliation. So you see that evangelicals, 94% said yes, that's true. Wow. So the real question is, you know, 94% say we are the solution, but they're saying we are the solution to a problem that we are, maybe don't know if exists, um, wow. or at least are not really ready to recognize the, the pain and the suffering that you know, a lot of their um, African American, especially brothers and sisters, are feeling, and aren't willing to validate that suffering. So this is, I think, one of the more striking examples yeah. of that. I wonder if, if as a way of sort of wrapping up the thought here is, is a, what do you recommend people do with, with your data? Yeah. Um, how, how should, what is the response to it? Um, clearly, uh, this is a slice of the population. Um, what's the best way to kind of take, what's the takeaway? Absolutely. Yeah, um, I think one of the big things that we need to do and what this conference, what we're talking about, the love and humility and, and even just gathering in this way, so much of it is can we talk to one another? Can we have these conversations? Um, can we, as Christians, really be able to sort of reach across these divides, these divides that we've sort of, in many ways, been, been a part of creating? Um, and we have done some, some research recently on sort of conversations and friendship. 
Um, so we asked people, uh, which group do you think it would be difficult to have a natural and normal conversation with? Um, so you can see evangelicals, 87% um, said it would be tough to talk to a Muslim, 67 to a Mormon, 85 to an atheist, 28% said it would be tough to talk to another evangelical. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> um, and 87% said to the LG, yeah, <laughs> LGBT community. Um, and you can see that across the board, kind of other groups have less of a hard say they would have less of a hard time talking to one another. So again, there's sort of this, how can we begin to practice these conversations in a better way? And I think part of that is just proximity, um, mm. which we've talked, we talked to Americans really about where they have friendships um, and really found this sort of, friend, opposites don't seem to attract. Like, you can see the majority of people, when we ask, would you say your current friends are mostly similar or different from you in these areas? So religious belief, racial or ethnic background, social mm. status, level of education, income, political views, yeah. um, life stages. So you can see people are hanging out with people who are just like them. The majority of Americans are doing that. And of course, when you look at evangelicals, they're the group, they're the group least likely to have friends who are like them in unlike them in religious beliefs, unlike them in racial or ethnic background, and unlike them in political views. So I think that's a big place to start, is proximity to people who are different than us, who have different views, and being able to foster those conversations. Yeah, Roxanne, thank you so You're much. You're welcome. Let's, uh, let's thank Roxanne. Thank you.